Are you interested in some spicy new deck tech? Well, here's your host, Capital G! And peoples of the world, welcome back. It's Capital G bringing you Abdel Atrian, Gorian's Ward. Uh, before we get into the deck tech, of course, be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy everything we're doing here on the channel. Also, links will be in the description below for the Dungeons and Cardboard Discord group. Uh, things have gotten pretty quiet while I was on vacation, so hopefully we can get a little more activity back into the group. Uh, in the meantime, uh, let's talk about actually the previous deck that I've covered. Let's talk about Gorian for a second. Because um, I did a deck tech on Gorian and I made a couple of uh, rolls blunders on uh, some cards that I included. Uh, reading the card explains the card most of the time. Uh, but in those cases, reading the card definitely would have explained the card. So I do apologize for those mistakes and thank those who spotted it and pointed them out to me. And uh, hoping to do a little bit better, although this deck is probably a touch more complex, as we will see. So, Abdel Adrian, Gorian's Ward. He's a far traveler. Um, got a white and a four for this 4-4 four, four human warrior. And when he enters the battlefield, exile any number of other non-land permanents you control. Until Abdel Adrian leaves the battlefield. Keep that wording in mind, by the way. Create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for each permanent exile this way. You also get to choose a background. So backgrounds for those that don't remember um, is a selection of enchantments from the Baldur's Gate set that you can have as basically a partner commander. And the backgrounds of course are enchantments that only enhance your commanders. So uh, for this particular tech I went with Far Traveler. So it's a white and two, legendary enchantment background. Commander creatures you own have at the beginning of your end step, exile up to one target tapped creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Pretty sweet stuff. So the reason I'm talking about sort of nuance and timing, and I've checked with a couple of judges, so uh, thanks to uh, thanks to the judges over on uh, Dungeons and Cardboard for helping me uh, clarify this detail. So note how Abdel's exile effect is a, it's basically a duration. It says those permanents return, are exiled until he leaves the battlefield. Uh, so Far Traveler, if I have my Abdel tapped, I can actually blink Abdel. And before Abdel's, before the ability completely resolves, all of the permanents that Abdel had exiled up to that point actually come back onto the battlefield because the, the effect has ended mid-resolution. Uh, it's not a delayed trigger. A delayed trigger would have to wait until after Abdel had returned to the battlefield. But in Abdel's case, it's a specific duration and therefore does not use the stack. So what that means is that once I use the Far Traveler to effect to blink Abdel Adrian, he can target the things that just came back, as well as anything else that uh, may have appeared on the battlefield up to that point. So that's the concept here. Um, I do want to point out a pretty popular combo with Abdel. Um, it's not going to be in this deck because we're running mono white. But if you had chosen one of the black colored black, uh, backgrounds to go with Abdel, then you'd be able to run an infinite combo with Anime Dead. So Abdel goes to the graveyard, Anime Dead. Abdel comes onto the, onto the battlefield, blinks out everything, including the Anime Dead, dies. Animate dead and everything else comes back onto the battlefield, infinite tokens. We're not doing that here, but uh, definitely wanted to acknowledge the fact that this is a known combo. Um, if you see Abdel Adrian paired with a black colored background, uh, beware of this. But even in mono white with the far traveler background, Abdel is a force to be reckoned with. I was surprised by how durable this deck is. It's a very durable deck. I've played uh, two games with it so far, and it's very, very difficult to play around. Uh, so let's see what I went with. I went with a lot of artifacts that had some pretty handy ETB effects, even if they're not necessarily great cards in our format. Uh, started with the Alchemist File, uh, which has been clutched in one of my games as I was able to take out someone's only blocker and then uh, swing for lethal. Uh, but even without that activated ability, the fact that on ETB this draws us a card, and then this is a target that we can exile nonchalant with our commander. So every time our commander blinks, this comes back onto the battlefield, draws us another card. 
Uh, one card I did not get to play in my two games so far, Black Vice. Uh, very nasty card, and the nice thing about this is that with Abdel, it's an easy blank target. We can change targets uh, if we so need to. And it's just a one mana artifact that'll just chip in for some early damage. So for those who don't know it, uh, when it enters the battlefield, we get to choose an opponent. Uh, we're showing the masterpiece, ver the, uh, masterpiece version here, but obviously the older printings are actually cheaper. Uh, but this has the, more, the most accurate wording. When this enters the battlefield, we choose an opponent. And at the beginning of chosen player's upkeep, Black Vice, deal, Black Vice will deal X damage to that player, where X is the number of card, cards in their hand in excess of four. So someone, say the blue player is always sitting with a full uh, fist of cards. Well, they're going to have to eat some damage. It also slows down those players that really love to play their Sylvan Libraries. Uh, brought up a Czar Barge. Seems like an odd choice. Yes, this draws a card on ETB, four mana artifact. Has crew three, and it can be a five, five. Uh, but the most important thing here is that with the vehicles, then there are a small number of vehicles in the deck, but we can actually tap Abdel using our vehicles. So Abdel can crew the vehicles by tapping. And then, well, that meets the conditions for Far Traveler now, doesn't it? So the vehicles are actually quite handy here. A Caged Sun, we're playing a monocolored deck. Uh, Caged Sun isn't as popular as it used to be. I um, guess six mana is a little too much for the pace of the format these days, but I put it in here because it's still a great benefit to our deck. Cultivator's Caravan, not only is this a vehicle, but it's a mana rock. Yes, it's a mana rock at three, uh, but our curve is low enough so that we can actually blink this out when we don't need it and get more tokens. Dermataxi, uh, this is uh, some graveyard hate for us. When it enters the battlefield, exile a creature card from a graveyard. Uh, note that we must exile a creature card from a graveyard, so if we're the only people with uh, a creature card in our graveyard, we must exile it. Oops, uh, but that's a very minor thing. We're not really doing creature recursion in the deck. But still, nice way to control our opposing Moldrofa players, shall we say. Dragon Throat of Tarkir. We can throw this on Abdel and turn him into a repeatable overrun. So that's the idea here, and even if it's too soon, like we don't have any tokens on the board, we can blink out the Dragon Throne and get our t and, and build up our army that way. And he builds up tokens fast. I was uh, very shocked to see how quickly you can build up an army with him. Uh, Gilded Pinions. It's an equipment. When it enters the battlefield, create a treasure. An equipped creature has flying, so it actually provides us another way of tapping our commander. We can actually equip this to our commander, swing with flying, which will get past most blockers and blink our commander that way. Also, the Guild of Pinions themselves, every time it comes onto the battlefield, giving us some treasure, giving us some ramp. Yes, please. Got the Heraldic Banner. Another three mana mana rock, but this one's actually quite popular. It's like a buck 50 US right now for one of these. Um, but yeah, three to cast. Taps for mana of whatever you choose. So we're, we're always gonna choose white because creatures we control the chosen color get plus one plus O. Oh. So it taps, it taps for our white mana, and it boosts our white creatures, and we're going to have a lot of white creatures. We're going white here. The high-speed hoverbike. When it enters the battlefield, tap up to one target creature. It's got flash, which is pretty nifty, and a cheap crew cost, again, to help out our commander. Icor Wellspring. When this enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard, draw a card. But we're just repeatedly going to blink this with our commander and draw a bunch of cards with this for a very small investment. The Imperial Recovery Unit. We do have a few creatures that have a mana value of two or less, and this gives us a chance to get them back from our graveyard. So as long as we don't accidentally exile them with our Dermataxi, uh, well, this will get us a lot more value. Leon and Sun Standard. This card is a monster in this deck, believe it or not. Uh, two mana to cast. Artifact that says for a white and one mana creatures you control get one plus one plus one until end of turn. So once you've got your once you know you've got your army built up, you leave this on the field. You don't blink it out with our commander, but leave it on the field. Because and when you're ready, you've got your critical mass of tokens. Dump all your mana into this and swing up a humongous army. Uh, knocked out a Vishkal player with uh, like fifty something life in one attack thanks to this thing. Uh, mana geode. 
Again, a three mana mana rock, but it gives us a scry whenever it comes onto the battlefield, so we'll take that. Marble Diamond just here for the ramp. Um, Micah Sing for Wellspring. Uh, when this enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, we get to go get a basic land and put it into our hand. Uh, pulling lands out of our library, putting them into our hand, just makes it a lot easier to draw more gas, especially when we're doing this over and over and over again. Uh, Mysterious Limousine. Interesting little blink effect, this. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, exile to one other target creature until this leaves the battlefield. If a creature is put into exile this way, return each other card previously exiled with it to the battlefield under its owner's control. So, we can crew it with our commander. Um, it can exile our commander for us if uh, we're having problems, problems keeping our far traveler enchantment in play. Um, also, it's a shenanigans. I like the card. Nimble right schematic. When it enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard, create a 1 1 colorless construct artifact token. Ominous parcel. Uh, this is just here as a generic target, honestly. For one mana, if you put this out, and it says two tap and sack just to go get a basic and put it into our hand, or five tap and sack to be a four damage target creature. So it's here specifically as a blink target, but it could get us that extra bit of value if we need it. This is definitely more of a back pocket idea here. Prize statue. Um, gets us a treasure token whenever it enters the battlefield or is put into the graveyard from the battlefield. Prophetic prism. Two mana, yes, it's, uh, don't ignore the activated ability. We're never ever gonna use it. It is here to just draw cards. Scroll of fate. Now here's a bit of a convoluted idea with this one. So three mana, we've dropped this down. At instant speed, we can tap it and manifest a card for our hand, which if you can, as you can see from the reminder text, we put a, car, a, a card face down on the table as a 2-2 two, two creature. Um, if its front face is a creature, we can flip it over by paying its mana value. Now the idea here, of course, is that we want to manifest one or two permanents with this um, the turn before we cast Adele. Uh, because if we successfully do this, then we exile our manifested cards, and so long as they're permanents, regardless of what type they are, they'll come back and they'll eventually come back into play face up, ready to go. So this helps us save some mana. And we don't need to scroll fade anymore because we're going to run out of cards pretty quickly using this. Well, we blink it out and get some to gets another token that way as well. Uh, servo schematic. Uh, when this enters the battlefield is put in, or is put into the graveyard, we get a 1-1 colorless servo token. A soul ring. A spine of Ishop blink this over and over again for all of the permanents blowing up. And an unstable obelisk. Just another way to blow up permanents later in the game if we need to. Some creatures, uh, including a few that can give us some slow and uh, so either fast or slow blink starting with the charming prince when it enters the battlefield we can scry two or we can gain three life or we can exile another creature we own until the uh, beginning of the next end step so uh, great synergy with our commander here all three modes clockwork fox this is a bit of an oddball card from the uh, Baldur's Gate set I thought it'd be fun to highlight this one three mana for this three two and whenever it leaves the battlefield, that includes when it's exiled by Abdel, you draw two cards and each opponent draws a card. So a little group huggy, um, but it's a lot of card value. So I've not had a chance to cast this yet. I'll let you know how it performs, but it looks good on paper anyways. Uh, Ellen Hargreaves, Busybody. Again, someone else that I've not had a chance to cast yet, but looks fantastic here. Uh, four mana for this 2-4 Human Peasant. Uh, tap and look at the top X cards of our library where X is the number of tokens we've created this turn and we're creating anywhere from three to six tokens every time we blink um, Abdel if not more uh, Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest of the bottom of your library in a random order uh, Farfinder every time this hits the battlefield we go get a basic uh, Flicker Wisp uh, Does exactly what it says it does uh, exile another another permanent, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. That is, any permanent, we don't have to own it. Um, I've blinked somebody's, I think it was Angelic Ascension. 
So I, when it came back onto the battlefield, it lost all the counters that I had built up up to that point. So great piece of utility here. Uh, the core cartographer, this is just some straight up ramp and white. Um, go get a planes card, put it onto the battlefield, tapped. Uh, Meteor Golem destroys a non-land permanent opponent controls because that's what we like doing. Araskus Explorer. Uh, when this enters the battlefield, we get to search our library for up to X planes cards, where X is the number of players who control more lands than we do. Reveal them and put them into our hand. So, we're playing mono white. Chances are someone's going to be ahead of us on lands. Um, this will pull some of those basics out of the deck for us for a mere two mana. I like it. Uh, Pilgrim of the Ages, another way to pull basics out of our deck. Um, obviously, because I'm running a lot of ways to pull basics, I'm running a lot of basics in the deck, as we'll see. Uh, Pilgrim's Eye, again, go get a basic. Uh, the Quarry Colossus, here's a long forgotten piece. Uh, white, white, and five for this 5 6 giant. And when this enters the battlefield, put target creature into its owner's, owner's library just beneath the top X cards of their library. X is the number of planes we control. Um, again, we're running mono white. We're going to have, by the time this comes out, we're going to have anywhere between three to eight planes, depending on when we cast this. And then every time it gets blinked afterwards. Spirited Companion enters the battlefield, draws us a card. The goodest of goodest boys. Steadfast Unicorn. Here's a nice uh, piece here. One mana for this 1-2 Unicorn. I like the activated ability. It's a little pricey, but the fact that we can use this as many times as we like is pretty cool. Uh, for four mana, creatures we control get plus one, plus one, and Vigilance until end of turn. It's pretty jaff, uh, draft chaffy, but... Uh, you'd be surprised how well this performs once you've got 15 tokens or so. Subjugator Angel. Um, again, we have an army on the battlefield. We drop this, and I did knock uh, knock someone out using the Subjugator Angel. When this enters the battlefield, tap all creatures your opponents control. The fact that we can in concept do this over and over again, but even just once, uh, all of a sudden our opponents are, have shields down and they're facing down an army of our soldier tokens. Lights out. Uh, Wall of Omens, when this enters the battlefield, draws us a card. And onto some enchantments. Uh, of course, the Cathars Crusade. All those tokens coming in will see each other and make each other swole. Uh, the Era of Enlightenment. Um, thought this was a fun little ad, throwing in some of these uh, Kamigawa sagas. Uh, chapter 1 is Scry 2, Chapter 2 is Gain 2 Life, and Chapter 3 is Exile the Saga, then Return to the Battlefield Transformed into the Hand of Enlightenment. So, not a super powerful card by any means, but the fact that regardless of how far into the story we go, we can go right back to the beginning and get that Scry. It's pretty good value, actually. Um, uh, we are not there yet. We are at Intangible Virtue. This is a huge Anthem effect in this deck, and very clutch for me in my game so far. White and one. Treat your tokens you control, get plus one, plus one, and have Vigilance. That's right, we could swing it with our army of soldiers, and our opponents will have a very, very difficult time cracking back at us. Omen of the Sun. Uh, three mana at flash speed, we can uh, cast this. Comes onto the battlefield, gives us a couple of 1-1 one, one white human soldiers. And we gain 2 life. And it's also an amazing target for Abdel, because then Abdel blinks it out. When it comes back in, makes uh, it gives us even more tokens, as well as that incremental life gain. The Fall of Lord Honda. Uh, for 3 mana, exile target creature to opponent controls with mana value 4 or greater. So great piece of removal here. Uh, chapter 2, each player gains control of all permanents they own. Could be incidentally relevant, but not in my game so far. It's really here for Chapter 1 and the fact that we can use Chapter 1 over and over and over again. It could at some point become a Fragment of Conda, which when it dies draws us a card, but this is not what we're going for. We're definitely here to reuse that Chapter 1 ability as many times as we can. Uh, our last enchantment will be Valor and Akros. Uh, once we've already got an army out, if we cast a, a fast blink effect, and we'll see those shortly, uh, we can make our army swole for the turn and swing out. 
So not quite as good as Cathar's Crusade, but still devastating. Over to our instance, uh, a little bit of removal. Uh, Angelic Ascension seems like a bit of an odd choice, but it hits creatures or planeswalkers for two mana, and the consequence is pretty, pretty minor, I think. Brave the Elements. We have a lot of white features, so for one white mana, give them all protection from protection from red, and therefore protection from Blasphemous Act. A Cloud Shift. Exile a creature we control, then return it to the battlefield under your control. Sweet stuff on this one. Contraband Livestock. Exile target creature, then roll a d20. Uh, even on the worst case scenario, 1 to 9, our opponent gets a 4-4 four, four Ox. Uh, but then if we get 10 to 19, it's a 2-2 two, two Green Boar token instead. Or if it's a natural 20, it's a 1-1 one, one Goat. Or a 0-1 Goat, in fact, even better. Uh, but even the base mode of Contraband Livestock is actually stronger than Angelic Ascension. So there's some actual actual examples of power creep here between Angelic Ascension and Contraband Livestock. Uh, over to the Dawn Charm. For two mana, we can choose to prevent all combat damage will be dealt this turn. Or we could choose to regenerate a creature. Regenerate, of course, meaning that if the creature would be destroyed, it's instead tapped, removed from combat, and remove all damage that was on it. Uh, option three, counter a spell that targets you. So nice, fun tech piece here. A straight up disenchant. Uh, sometimes just the classics work really, really well. Destroy an artifact or an enchantment for two mana. Flicker of Fate. Exile a creature or an enchantment, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. This is exactly what we want to be doing with our commander. So Long Road Home, one of the slow blink effects, as I like to call them. Exile's target creature, and at the beginning of the next end step, the card comes back onto the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter. Uh, make a stand. Make all our creatures indestructible and plus one plus oh. Um, yes, please. Otherworldly journey. Another slow blink effect. At the beginning of the next end step, the, the, the creature comes back onto the battlefield with a one one counter. Root born defenses. Populate and creatures with control gain indestructible. So get another token and protect our board. Yes, please. And another one of the classics Swords to Plowshares. Uh, one Planeswalker, because we've got a lot of cheap artifacts. Ugin. At that point, then, all of our cheap artifacts cost zero. Sure. Also, the fact that we can use the plus one exile the top card of our library face down. And we create a 2-2 color of the spirit creature token. When the token leaves the battlefield, even if it's Abdel that makes them leave the battlefield, put the card, put the exile card into your hand. Which is pretty sweet. Also, again, just being able to destroy almost any target so long as it's got a color. Also very powerful. Uh, some sorceries. I just wanted to try I want to try out cut a deal. I've not been able to cast this yet. I just want to try it. Each opponent draws a card, then you draw a card for each opponent who drew a card this way. So for white, three mana, three cards in concept? Um, yes, please. Hour of Reckoning. Great board wipe and a token deck. Destroy all non-token creatures. So as long as our Abdel's on the battlefield when we do this, yes, our commander goes back to the command zone. But then we get all the value from the stuff that was exiled because it comes back in after the fact. And Slaughter the Strong coming in clutch for me in one of my games. Um, each player chooses any number of creatures they control with total power four or less, and then sacrifices all other creatures they control. Um, excellent, excellent board wipe. Very efficiently costed at three mana. So we get to keep maybe four tokens. Maybe we just keep our commander out, depending on what the what the state of the game calls for. Very flexible board wipe in our favor. All right, over to the mana base now with the arcane lighthouse. Just a nice utility piece, being able to have our opponent's creatures lose Hexproof and Shroud. Uh, Buried Ruin to bring an artifact back from our graveyard to our hand in case we need that. Crystal Vein comes in untapped, it taps our colorless, but if we need that extra shot of mana for a turn, we can tap and sack it for two colorless instead. Evolving Wilds, a Field of Ruin. Um, somebody's got a land that's potentially annoying or potentially going to Unleash Merit Leech upon us. Field of Ruin is there to help us with that. Uh, the Myriad Landscape. 
It taps for our colorless, or we can sack this off to get two basics and put them onto the battlefield tapped. A Phyrexius Core. One tap, sack an artifact to gain a life. Uh, in case we need some extra value from our artifacts, such as Michaelson's Wellspring, we've got it. 22 basic planes in the deck. A Ruins of Troll Care, which comes into play tapped, but it does tap for white mana, or we can tap and sack it for two white mana. Sanctum of Eternity. Uh, our commander's on the battlefield. It's our turn. Pay two. Return the our commander to the battlefield. Return all the exiled things back onto the board. Yes, please. Secluded Step for some cheap cycling. A Terramorphic Expanse. And lastly, a uh, Zalfrin Void, which when it enters the battlefield, a Scry 1. Comes in untapped and taps for generic mana. That gives us 34 lands in total, and that gives us an Abdel Adrian Far Traveler deck. I hope you all enjoyed that little uh, that little list. Um, it is a blast to play. It's very tricky to play. You have to be very patient when you're running it, because um, you kind of have to decide from turn to turn. Like, what do I exile? What do I keep on the board for later? It's a it's a it's an interesting little balancing balancing effect. So, I mean, for example, I had a game where I could have exiled my mana geode with Abdel, but I chose not to, and it came in clutch because then I was able to. Uh, use sorts of plowshares on a key creature. So, um, it's very t it's a very tactical deck, um, but lots of value very very quickly. I was impressed by its performance so far. So, uh, obviously not for the higher higher power tiers, but for what it can do in mono white, uh, it was impressive. Uh, so on that, I'm gonna get going here. Uh, I'm gonna slow down on uh, deck techs for the summer. Uh, just not too too much happening, at least until Dominaria United. Uh, I know Double Masters just came out, and obviously a lot of people who don't already have those power cards are excited. Uh, I myself will not be buying into it, uh, just because the price point for the boosters are so high that it's not actually going to reduce the cost of the singles. I mean, not by significant margin anyways. It's not like they're selling, you know, six, seven dollar Canadian, say, seven dollar Canadian uh, booster packs and you could get a Dockside. No, they're, they're at like between 15 and 20 dollars up here right now. So, yeah, uh, I could just be living in the wrong part of the country or it could be the standard across the country. I don't know, um, but I'm not shelling 20 to risk pulling a Teneb the Harvester or a uh, Primeval Titan, because I can't play Primeval Titan in our format. So, there you go. That's that's my stance on Double Masters. Great reprint set. If you don't already have a lot of these cards, and you've got if you've got the income to support it, then go for it. But I'm personally not going to be gambling on these cards. I will be watching the singles in case I'm wrong and the prices actually do go down. But I'm not holding my breath. On that... Um, not sure what's next, but whatever it is, I'll see you then. Bye for now.